Good afternoon, and welcome to our daily COVID-19 update for the town of Plymouth. This is update number 29, coming to you live on Earth Day, April 22nd, 2020. I'm Steve Trifletti, your Plymouth Town moderator, and we're here each day, Monday through Friday, at noon for this update. This forum is being brought to you live by PAC TV on Comcast channels 13 and 15 and Verizon channels 43 and 47. You can also watch this on PAC TV's streaming channel by going to pactv.org slash live. Today, your questions can be sent by email to plymouthinfo at pactv.org and these forums can be replayed at pactv.org slash Plymouth. Today, Kenneth Tavares, Chair of the Board of Selectmen, and Matthew Muratori, Plymouth State Representative, are joining me with Dr. Gary Maestas, the Superintendent for Plymouth Public Schools, Sarah Cloud, and she is the Director of Behavioral Health and Social Work at Beth Israel Deaconess at the Plymouth campus. Also, Michael Jackman, he is staff with Congressman Bill Keating's office. Heather Cosby, she is a CPA from the town of Plymouth and Amy Naples, the Executive Director for the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Each day we date stamp each of these presentations with the date in the corner on the top right-hand side. And we hope to provide you with verified information from officials and experts who are responding to COVID-19. We're gonna begin as we do each day with the Chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen, Kenneth Tavares. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I really don't have anything new to report in today. The board is working on a docket for next Tuesday. The board of Selectmen will be meeting Tuesday at 5 p.m. on Back TV. Um, in the interest of the hot topic from yesterday, the closing of the schools, uh, I uh, give my time to the superintendent. Uh, as is Kenneth Tavares, the chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen. Uh, before each of these forums, we have an opportunity to talk among ourselves as town officials and as other people contributing. And uh, earlier today, I had several conversations with uh, Selectman Chair uh, Kenneth Tavares regarding Plymouth's annual and special town meeting. They're currently scheduled for May 30th with an expectation they may be further continued into June. In part, we're waiting for uh, an order from the governor regarding what would be happening with the current May 4th advisory. In addition, uh, I've been contacted by uh, the chair of the Committee of Precinct Chairs, Alan Costello, uh, asking to give feedback to town meeting members regarding what would happen if we don't have a town meeting. And uh, as I've discussed with Chairman Tavares, we're gonna be looking at all of our options. Uh, he'll be presenting a more uh, detailed uh, response uh, as we move towards next Tuesday's uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting. So there'll be more to come on that issue. And at this time, as uh, Selectman Chair Tavares uh, indicated, we're going to go right to our superintendent, uh, Dr. Gary Maestas. Gary, yesterday we, during our program, uh, we heard that schools were closed at the end of the year. Uh, what does that mean for the town of Plymouth? Well, the uh, governor announced yesterday that the schools uh, across the Commonwealth will be closed uh, for the remainder of the school year. For us here in Plymouth, and just like other schools in Massachusetts, uh, that means that we will continue with our, our online learning model, which uh, has been, uh, we rolled that out um, a, a while ago. We, we actually picked that up about three weeks ago. Uh, so our students will progress in their education through the online learning model, which uh, has really been guided by the Department of Education. We'll have an update uh, on that model from the Department of Education at the end of this week. We will incorporate those recommended changes by the Department of Education. We'll have those in place uh, by the following week uh, and as time rolls on. So I think for our education, uh, pre-K through 11, uh, that is the normal operation of how things will, will, will work. Our biggest uh, thought and our biggest concern at this point is how we graduate our seniors. Uh, that has really kind of been the topic of discussion since yesterday at noon and how we do that. So uh, we will be uh, coming with guidance on what we do. There are a number of options that we could uh, in, in involve. 
but we have a number of uh, options that we're looking at. Again, I think social distancing uh, protocols uh, will have a factor in, in what direction we go and, and when those things change. But, uh, you know, through you, Steve, I just want everyone out there, our, our seniors, our families, grandparents that have seniors in this graduating class, I want them all to know that uh, I want this graduation to be very special for them. Despite the circumstances that we're dealing with, I want them to feel very comfortable that we're going to come up with something that uh, will be special for them. It may not be the traditional Plymouth graduation, but it's going to be something that's going to culminate their years of experience in the Plymouth Public Schools and also uh, the 2020 significance of their um, life in the Plymouth Public Schools. Some of them have been in Plymouth in the school system since kindergarten and first grade. Others have come to the district uh, later in their educational life, but we want them to know that we are taking this very seriously and we want this to be special. Uh, on a side note to that, uh, this graduating class um, was in first grade when I started my superintendency here in Plymouth. So this year had um, a number of uh, significant points to, to me and them and connected to them in a way that um, um, has been significant. So. I just want everybody to know that uh, school is on in session. We are going beyond May 4th, um, and we're going to finish the school year virtually. And um, the, my best wishes to the senior class, and we'll keep those families informed on what we plan to do moving forward. Thank you. That's Dr. Gary Maestas, Superintendent Plymouth Public Schools. Uh, he and the other participants today will be available to answer your questions uh, send them to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And Dr. Maestas has also arranged uh, for some principals to be joining us in the next two days. Uh, he's supported by uh, elementary school principal Dan Harold from Fellow Furnace, who will be joining us tomorrow. And then on Friday, we will have a middle school and a high school principal uh, also to provide us with updated information regarding uh, education in Plymouth Public Schools. At this time, we're going to go to the Beth Israel Deaconess Plymouth campus, where we're joined by Sarah Cloud. Sarah is the Director of Behavioral Health and Social Work. And Sarah, each day people are seeing lots of information on TV and in other news sources, uh, some of it good, uh, much of it uh, upsetting, uh, scary to some people, stressful, causing them fear. What can you say to people in the Plymouth area that you've been able to provide as a response uh, to COVID-19? Hi. Hello, all, everyone in Plymouth. Um, I'd love to answer that response, um, that question, but I'd like just to do a quick shout out to the community for their amazing support and generosity um, and well wishes to the folks that are on the front line in the hospital. Um, please know that it's meant a lot to the members of the team, including the physicians, the nurses, the support staff, food service, housekeeping and facilities. And we're also very grateful to our community partners on the front lines, the EMS, police and fire and all the essential workers that are um, keeping the community running. Um, I, these are very challenging times. And, um, and as we do everything we need to do as a community with uh, physical distancing, wearing masks, um, when we're out and washing our hands. Um, I think this community should be very proud of themselves because they really are making a big difference and we're really seeing that back here at the hospital in terms of our ability to um, be able to provide care to the folks that need it and that are sick and, um, and do that really, really well. And we're able to do that because um, the numbers are down and manageable here in um, Plymouth. So we really wanna uh, acknowledge all the hard work and sacrifices that people are making during this difficult time. Um, and one of the really challenging pieces of working in healthcare at this time is um, when loved ones, when your loved ones are coming in and they're sick and patients are alone um, due to the visitor restrictions um, that are really essential in keeping everybody healthy and well, um, you know, it's very difficult as it is to be in the hospital and not well, but then not to be able to have the visitors and the support of your family members. So one of the changes that we have made here at the hospital is um, offering uh, virtual visits um, using iPads and technology. And so, you know, if anyone has a loved one here in the hospital, they haven't been able to come in and see, but would really like a, a virtual visit, we're happy to arrange that um, and make that happen. 
We're also seeing uh, an increase in uh, visits as a result of anxiety, um, depression, uh, emotional distress, uh, substance use. I think these are particularly difficult times to really be isolated socially. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of disruptions to our routines and our day and our structure and a lot of additional stressors around finances. So we anticipate that and we want to make access to treatment as easy as possible. So we're seeing some really great shifts and trends in terms of telehealth um, that allow people to uh, receive services either through the hospital or or through community resources directly in their home. Um, so they don't need to leave. They don't necessarily need to come to the emergency room. Um, and there's ways in which we can deliver services directly to them <coughs> in the comfort and safety of their home. Um, and we certainly have the capacity in the emergency room as well. Um, so if people are feeling that they need to seek services, please feel free to certainly to, to go ahead and access the services that are needed. Um, we run a behavioral health department in collaboration with our primary care and our specialty practices. It's an integrated care initiative. It's so kind of a short-term consultation model. Um, we have transitioned that 100% from in-person visits to telehealth. Um, so that is also something that's available to the community if they have a specialty practice or a pre-CP that's connected here with the hospital. Um, and so those are some of the updates um, in terms of the hospital and services that are uh, available during these um, challenging times. Thank you, and that's Sarah Cloud, and she is with Beth Israel Deaconess, the Plymouth campus. She'll be staying with us as we answer your questions by sending them to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And next, we're joined by Michael Jackman. He is staff member at the office of Congressman Bill Keating. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Steve, and thank you again for uh, to you and to PACTV for hosting these forums. It's a great opportunity for us to share what's going on. Before I put on my federal hat, though, I, I just want to wear my hat as the chair of the local Community Health Network Alliance. Um, I feel like following Sarah and Dr. Maestas, I, I sort of have to give a shout out to the work that they're doing, obviously, as, as are all of your panelists who, who are contributing so much to helping people through these tough times. But um, just want to point out that on our website, uh, which is chanad.org, the uh, South Shore Community Partners in Prevention. We're a local community health group. And uh, Sarah mentioned uh, the uh, emotional and, and stressing stressful struggles that people are going through. And our website, chna23.org, there are resources on there to deal with mental health, uh, behavioral health, um, uh, drug addiction, uh, other issues that are really being... Um, uh, emphasized because of the uh, struggles of the quarantine. So I just wanted to mention that before I move on to the uh, report from the congressional office, my other hat, um, just a couple things to, to kind of give updates on. Uh, a lot of folks are um, in the midst of receiving or wondering why they have not received their stimulus rebate benefit, um, the $1,200 quote-unquote check that folks uh, should be getting. Um, if you have direct deposit information on file with the IRS, that'll make it a lot easier for them to get that stimulus rebate to you by direct deposit. A lot of folks who are Social Security beneficiaries, whether, whether it's a pension or disability or SSI, uh, who do not file taxes and might not have that information on file, uh, they are urged to go to the IRS website to try to um, input that information. And we recognize that a lot of people are having difficulty with that website. I actually have a phone call at 1 o'clock uh, for congressional uh, staff with the IRS to try to get more information on what they are doing to improve that portal, to make it more user-friendly and make it more... Um, uh, make it easier for folks to enter their information. Um, I'll give the website for folks who need to access that. It's irs.backslash/eip, short for Economic Impact Payment. So it's irs.gov/backslash/eip. One thing I will note: if you are an SSI recipient um, and you do not file taxes. You probably also do not have um, information on file as to your dependents. And as people may have read, if you have uh, children under 17, I believe, 
uh, you are eligible for a $500 additional um, benefit from the economic impact payment. Um, if you are SSI recipient, I would urge you to, as soon as possible, go to that website, irs.gov backslash EIP, and try to enter that information, because otherwise the Treasury Department will not know about your dependents and will not know that you qualify for that extra $500 per child. Uh, we're trying to get that message out. We're trying to um, share that with as many people as we can because folks um, really need to know that so they can get the full benefit. Um, one other thing I want to mention uh, in just trying to get information about um, scams, which we always talk about, and uh, other programs that are out there to help people who are struggling financially, there is um, the CFPB, which is a Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, uh, created a few years back uh, by the government, has a great website. They have a blog on there that has a lot of frequently asked questions about the economic impact payments, about um, other programs like the, the Payroll Protection Act and unemployment. Uh, I would suggest people go to that. I'm sorry, I'm okay. going to give you another website, Steve, but it's consumerfinance.gov. This is it. And if you go it's to consumerfinance.gov backslash coronavirus, there's a lot of information on there. I would check out the blog. That's where all the FAQs are. And um, okay. as I said, there's some good information on there, which we're trying to get out, get the word out on. Um Last thing I just want to mention, people probably have read in the news that yesterday the Senate, the U.S. Senate, did pass a um, fourth round of financing for coronavirus relief. It's uh, the Payroll Protection Program and Health Enhancement Act, and the House will be uh, addressing it tomorrow, um, hopefully passing it so we can get some more relief to people. Uh, is an additional $310 billion for the payroll protection program, which, as folks know, they ran out of funding last week uh, for the number of um, applications that they received through the banks. And this bill also does set aside $60 billion for small businesses and for, for smaller banks as well, uh, credit unions, community financial development institutions, minority-owned banks, so um, I think there was some concern about the larger banks getting the bulk of the business through the original payroll protection program, and um, this bill will set aside some funding for that. It also has funding for hospitals and healthcare providers and uh, $25 billion for virus testing, uh, including $4.25 billion for states and localities based on the number of coronavirus cases. So some of that money could be coming to Massachusetts. Again, we will look forward to the House considering that bill tomorrow. And um, as always, try to get information out when we get the guidance from the from the administration on how that money will be rolled out. So um, glad to take any questions. Again, I'll give our phone number. We are uh, taking calls and trying to get back to people as quickly as we can. 508-746-9000 is our Plymouth office number. And I know I'll get calls because every time I come on and leave our number, we get, get some calls in the afternoon. So people should feel free to call us with uh, inquiries about any of these programs, and we will do what we can to help folks out. And um, I'm happy to take questions at the appropriate time. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. That's Michael Jackman. He is on staff with Congressman Bill Keating's office. Mike will join us each Wednesday, and we're... Uh, grateful that our federal, state, and local partners are continuing to communicate and work together uh, during this COVID-19 response. And at this time, uh, Mike's going to be followed by Heather Cosby, who also joins us each Wednesday. Uh, Heather, a lot has happened since last week. Uh, what do you have to provide us with today's update? Thank you, Steve, and thank you, PAC TV. Uh, yes, seven days. My life is never so exciting being an accountant. It's amazing to me. Um, so I wanted to just follow up a little bit on the individual um, payments. Last week, there was a question I didn't have a clear answer for, which is, um, do I have to pay back the stimulus payment? If you get the money, will you have to pay it back? Will it be taxable? Things like that. So I wanted to give a clear answer, and the answer is no. You do not have to pay it back. The way the, credit, the, way the tax uh, stimulus payment works is it's technically called a 2020 tax credit that's refundable. So... 
If you qualify based on your 28 tax, 2018 tax return, it's yours, you're done. If you get your 2019 return filed by July 15th, then, and you qualify, you will get the payment ahead of time, meaning before the next filing season. If you qualify, you're done, great. If for some reason you didn't qualify in 2018 or 2019, or you didn't get your 2019 return in that qualified you, when you file your 2020 tax return, so we're talking a year from now, if you qualify at that time based on your 2020 income, you will get the uh, credit on your 2020 return. If for some reason you didn't qualify, I mean, you, you qualified in 18 and then you made too much money later, it does not matter. And if in any one of the three years your income allows you to qualify, you will receive the payment. And a, a final analysis, a final uh, reconciliation is done on your 2020 return. So just know if you didn't get it now, there's a lot of people that could have not qualified. They could be making over 100000 in 18, 19, lost their job in 20. And in 20, they're not going to meet those limits. So next spring, they will get that extra money. It's not timely to when you need it, but that is how it's working. So I wanted to make sure everybody had uh, a better understanding of that. Uh, the other piece of this is a lot of people ask if they're going to be taxed on this. It's not taxable income. It will not be a part of your tax return. It will not impact any calculations of your income for other purposes. Uh, so I want to be clear on, on that. Um, another thing about this payment that I got some new information on this week is the timing of the payment. It's It's been not described well, I think, uh, at any news conference, but this is a new understanding I have is that if you have your direct deposit information in, they're rolling that out. You have until July 15th to try and update information or file your return to get it rolled out to you. If at that point you don't have a direct deposit or your banking information with the IRS, they will be rolling out payments via check to the tune of about 5 million taxpayers a week, and it's based on your adjusted gross income. So, for example, if your adjusted gross income is $10,000 10, 10 to $20,000, your, your check will be mailed the week of May 1st. And then every week after that AGI limit goes up by 20,000. So if your income is 100,000, your AGI, the, it, the week of July 3rd is when the check will be mailed. So I do have some concrete information here that um, if anybody wants more, more information, you can email PAC TV or I can figure out how to get this posted. But it's like this, it's this rolling weekly schedule of checks that will be issued. So that was some new information that I got. Um, other new information on the unemployment front is that the Massachusetts unemployment uh, website is ready for the sole proprietors or what they call gig workers, subcontractors. You're going to go to mass.gov slash PUA, and that stands for Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. That part of the website is ready to receive uh, claims for the, the affected um self-employment workers who have not been able to file thus far. The Just to give an, an idea, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program provides 39 weeks of unemployment benefits wow. and, uh, and to people that wouldn't normally qualify. So that website is up and running, I believe, as of yesterday. And, uh, and a lot of people are starting to get callbacks finally. They might have tried to file five weeks ago, and now that the system's up, they're starting to see movement on those claims. So if you haven't filed and you think you should file, you're, you're self-employed, uh, it's ready for you to start. Um, the last piece of info is, is the SBA loan, which uh, Mr. Jackman did a great job making you aware of. That is um, the new funding is, I think, three, uh, $370 billion, like he said. It's, it's supposed to be allocated in a manner that allows uh, more, uh, more businesses to, to get access to this money quickly. So right now, as a small business, if you didn't make it into the first round of funding, you should be completing your application with the bank as we speak. You should be um, ready to go. So the minute that, that funding is available, they can they can send your application to SBA. Uh, the way this was explained to me is that once SBA issues you a loan number, you're you're in, so to speak. So the follow up question to your banker would be, uh, do I have an SBA loan number yet? And then my understanding is that the bank then has 10 days from the time they get the SBA loan number issued to complete the package for the funding to happen. So that's just an update on some of the timing. And we're still waiting. There's people who are given a number 
and now the, it's closed, but they're still in under the first round, but they haven't even finished their paperwork. And I just wanted to reassure you that that's fairly normal. Um, and you're, you know, you're still working towards it. So that's kind of the, the update from the, the business and tax front. Um, and thank you to everybody that keeps working hard and, and working through this. Appreciate it. Thank you. And that's Heather Cosby and she's a CPA in Plymouth. She'll be here for your questions. You can send them to Plymouth info at PACTV.org. And for those of you watching, I just want to do a shout out again to PACTV and to Julie Thompson, who's sitting here uh, with me as many of the participants are giving us websites. Uh, she's busy on her computer getting the website, sending it into the production uh, people, and they're putting it up on the screen, uh, such as you just heard uh, Heather giving us a website, and it went up on the screen for all of you to view. So uh, again, thanks to PAC TV and thanks each day for the business segment. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're joined by Amy Naples, Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Amy, what do you have for us today? Thank you, Steve. I just want to reiterate what you said. Um, Julie Thompson is absolutely the best. You, Steve, are as well. I think it's amazing that PAC TV has provided this platform for all of us to be able to give an update um, on this very critical, important time in our lives. So um, I commend all the panelists as well for their great updates. Heather's is a hard act to follow, but um, <laughs> while the business community continu continues to work through the effects of COVID-19, conversations among employers are shifting to planning and implementing strategy strategies on how to return to work in public spaces what the future of work will be and how the industries are going to implement these changes. I want to assure the public and our business community that the chamber is working to provide answers and learning opportunities for you all. As much as we are working on critical business needs at this moment, we are also work very much working on recovery efforts that are needed for businesses to adjust and thrive. We will be launching with our local partners a return to work series and more information I'll have for you in the coming days. Um, we've also been having meetups with different industry sectors to gain feedbacks um, on areas that they need most assistance and what challenges they are facing. Because the climate is constantly changing, we have to hear from them all of the time. And their concerns are how to reopen and when to hire their employees back. So we are working through those questions um, with our partners, certainly. My advice to all businesses today is to give yourself a pat on the back. You've continued to push through this, adapt and overcome. We've seen businesses pivot, lead by example and come together like we have never seen before. So I encourage you all to keep going, set your goals and work on attaining them each day because we will come out of this and we will be that much stronger because of it. And lastly, I want to talk about our virtual events this week. This morning, we hosted our chamber networking virtually, which was great. Um, and tomorrow evening at 5 p.m., the chamber will be hosting its weekly happy hour networking. This is where businesses, business professionals come together to learn from each other, share best practices, and just have fun. And then at 10 a.m., the Chamber will be hosting its weekly webinar, and we have two very special guests this week, our state representatives, Matthew Miratori and Kathy Lenatra. They'll give an update on the Statehouse News, um, as well as answer many questions that businesses have during this time. I can't stress enough the importance for businesses to stay engaged, and it's, it's good for you and the health of your business. So as always, if I can be of any assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out. That is what the Chamber is here for. You can call me at 508-830-1620 or by email at amy at plymouthchamber.com. And that's our business update for today. Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce and uh, each day been joined by Kenneth Tavares and Matt Muratori, and the three of us uh, have been working cooperatively to schedule uh, people to join us on the panel. I want to thank each of them for their support, and uh, we're going to now hear an opening statement uh, from our Plymouth State Representative, Matthew Muratori. Matt, welcome. Hey, good afternoon, Steve, and uh, 
welcome to all the guests. And I actually like Wednesdays when uh, Mike Jackman and Heather Cosby are on because it takes a lot off my plate in prep prepping for these uh, noontime uh, com conferences. So, so I really appreciate that. And also a shout out to both of them, particularly uh, uh, to, to Sarah. Uh, you know, Sarah does great work at, at BID uh, Plymouth, uh, but has also been so instrumental in the reduction of uh, overdoses in the, com in the Plymouth County area and the group that she's working with. So we owe a great amount of gratitude to you, uh, Sarah, for what you've been doing in this yeah. community the last few years and continue to do uh, for those that are addicted. Uh, and Mike, uh, the work you do, not just with, uh, with um, Congressman Keating, we really appreciate the uh, collaborative effort that uh, your office and my office have together, but like, the work you do with Chinaro over the last few years too has been tremendous and we really appreciate it in the community. And I say this every time, we, we're so lucky with the amount of people and the talent that we have in this community in the, mom, in the town of Plymouth. So I'm just, I'm just glad to be a part of it. So uh, with that, let me just give you some, um, some updated numbers for today. Uh, the trend is starting to slow down a little bit. The numbers are going down a bit, uh, but let's, let's talk about the, um, the number of testing. So testing continues to grow, which is, again, we keep talking about testing and tracing. Those are the keys. Uh, to moving forward and getting back to a new normal at some point. Uh, as of yesterday at um, 10 a.m., there were 105,372 folks in the Commonwealth who have been tested, and that's 2.5% of the population of the Commonwealth. That increased by almost 6,000 tests from the day before, of 5,974. Of those tested, uh, confirmed cases as of, as of 10 a.m. Uh, yesterday, April 21st, We've had 41,199 confirmed cases, or 23.5% of those that have been tested have been confirmed with COVID-19. That's an increase of 1,556. And the amount of deaths has increased by 152 from the day before uh, to 1,961. Well, that's a little over 4.7% of those that have been confirmed with COVID-19 have unfortunately passed away. Um, some interesting stats with, with, those, with those numbers, uh, it, it does not discriminate between male and female. 50.6% uh, of the males uh, have passed away uh, from this and 49.4% of females have. 97.7% uh, of those who have, have, who have died from this uh, coronavirus um, had underlying health conditions. In Plymouth County, the increase uh, from the day before it has dropped. Uh, the increase uh, went up to 67 from the day before, so we're at over 3,000 in Plymouth County uh, with the number of confirmed cases to 3,043, which is a little bit more than 0.5% of the population of Plymouth County. Uh, the total deaths uh, in Plymouth County is 141, which is less than 0.02% of the population of Plymouth County. In the town of Plymouth, it rose by four folks uh, who have confirmed cases to 125 um, as of yesterday at 10 a.m., April uh, 21st, uh, with 87 uh, in isolation. As I said, opening up the peak, the peak really hit on the 16th of April, uh, where there was an increase of uh, 2,262 cases of confirmed COVID-19 cases. Uh, the next day, the 17th, it went down slightly to 2,221. On the 18th, it went down to 1,970. On the 19th, it went down to 1,705. Uh, on the 20th, it went down to 1,566. And yesterday, it went down by 10, still going down. So we have six days in a row where we've seen the amount of increased cases of COVID-19, confirmed cases, actually drop. Um, as, as we know, we are looking for you know, a good solid two weeks worth of numbers. Uh, for these to, for the surge to uh, for the start to flatten the curve, uh, but we're start, starting to see a little light at the end of the tunnel. We're still a good you know two, three, four, four weeks away uh, from that. As of um, uh, as as Sarah was talking about, the hospital has done a fantastic job in, in the Commonwealth. The uh, bed capacity for hospital beds is uh, over fifty percent. It's fifty seven percent of the beds in the Commonwealth, including the field sites, are open and available. Uh, matter of fact, the governor made some comments yesterday about that uh, to let people know that if, if you have an illness, you have an injury, and you've been holding off a little bit, 
um, because you're waiting for, you know, you don't want to take up a bed. It's, it's okay. If you contact your PCP and you talk to your doctor and they think it's okay for you to go to the, to the hospital and that's, that's going to be okay. Uh, Cause we do have quite a bit of capacity of, of beds, which is, which is a good thing while, while we're in the search. So the planning that we did uh, really worked well. Um, just a couple other stats. The average age of a COVID-19 patient is 54 years old. And the average age for somebody hospitalized with the COVID-19 is 68 years old. The deaths still are high with the um, over the age of 60. 95% um, of those that have passed away uh, are, are over the age of 60 with uh, a good majority of those over the age of uh, 80 years old. With regard to the long-term care um, facilities, and again, that includes um, uh, skilled nursing facilities, rest homes, and assisted livings. Uh, as of yesterday, there have been 7,044 cases of uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, in, uh, in at least one in, every, in 265 facilities. Uh, but that's how many people have been tested for it. Um, and again, this is for close to 70,000 people in these facilities. And again, 54%, 159 people have died in long-term care facilities uh, since this uh, pandemic started. So some uh, updates on the, on the state level. Uh, again, I was so happy to hear uh, Gary was coming on today. I think I actually texted him during the show yesterday because I knew there were a lot of updates coming. So... A little selfishly, I wanted to make sure he took the heat and not me. Uh, <laughs> Gary came on to uh, uh, to talk about that. And, and as I must um, personal note that my daughter is one of those that's scheduled to graduate in 2020. And, and I really appreciate the efforts that uh, Gary and the staff and the school committee are going to go through to try to make it special. And when Gary said he's going to make it special, I'm sure he will. So we really appreciate those efforts. Um, also that came out yesterday, the uh, emergency child care centers will remain uh, open until June 29th, uh, which means all other daycare providers will remain closed until that time. Uh, there was an extension of uh, no interest student loan programs through the Mass Department of Higher Ed, higher ed uh, deferring the scheduled non-interest loan payments for four months. Uh, so you have to August 1st to, uh, to pay those. And... Um, I was asked by uh, Selectman Cavarco and Selectman Tavares, Chairman Tavares, about the possibility of the Senate race that is coming up uh, on May 19th, the special Senate race to fill a seat of uh, the former Senator Vinny DiMacito. And uh, I did reach out to the Senate uh, this morning, and they are looking at the, the possibility that that may uh, need to be extended again. Um, they're just waiting for the announcement of the governor to see what the uh, uh, how far the governor is going to extend the, the deadline uh, the uh, the date of May 4th, uh, but there is some discussion about that and, and Chairman Tavares is aware of that. So far, that is scheduled for the 19th of, uh, of May, uh, but we'll have to wait to see what happens. And that is the update uh, from here, Steve. Thank you, Representative Matthew Muratori, uh, who joins us each day with Selectman Chair Ken Tavares. Uh, as we get ready to be answering your questions, please email us at PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. Tomorrow, we're going to be joined by Dr. Mark Wilson, uh, who is an epidemiologist. And we're very fortunate. He's a professor emeritus from the University of Michigan School of Public Health, Department of Epidemiology. He lives right here in Plymouth. And so he's going to be talking to us locally about testing and tracing and what that means to the greater Plymouth area. We're also going to be uh, hearing from uh, Dan Harold, who is a Federal Furnace Elementary School principal. And uh, in keeping with what Matt just brought up, we're going to be bringing back Town Clerk Lawrence Pizer, who will be talking about the upcoming elections currently scheduled May 19th, June 20th, and also how to get your absentee ballots for absentee voting. Uh, Stephen Cole will be joining us. Uh, for the business segment, and at this time, we're going to go to our questions. We have a number of questions. Uh, first, to Dr. Maestas. Uh, Gary, uh, our viewer asks, remote learning for seniors, will it end on May 29th, or will it continue? It will continue until the last day of the school year, which is June the 19th. 
So uh, online learning, our school year will continue all the way till the scheduled end of school, which is June the 19th. And so that would be for seniors graduating as well? That's the question. Seniors will, seniors will have a, a, a different schedule and we'll get that out to them. Uh, it's based on um, end of year requirements and end of class requirements. Uh, what I would tell all seniors out there, parents listening re regarding their last day of school, we will get that data out to you. It should parallel what they already have as far as information. So the date that was cited is most likely going to be the date that will be their last day of school. Thank you. And that's Dr. Gary Maestas, Superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools, Sarah Cloud from Beth Israel Deaconess. Uh, Sarah, we heard from our representative that there would be bed capacity statewide. What does that mean for Plymouth? Is there bed capacity at the local Plymouth campus? Yes, there is. Um, the system as a whole across Massachusetts and certainly the behavioral, um, the Beth Israel Leahy Health System did some very careful planning to ensure that there'd be um, a, not only capacity in our existing system, but additional capacity if needed, particularly around critical care beds um, and through careful planning and um, you know, the process, there is a capacity that's needed during the surge. Thank you. And Sarah Cloud is the Director of Behavioral Health and Social Work at Beth Israel Deacon is here in Plymouth. We're now going to go to Michael Jackman from Congressman Bill Keating's office. And Mike, this is a question related to the IRS website. And the viewer writes that I filed 2018 taxes, but not 2019 yet. I tried to go to the IRS website to give direct deposit information, but an error message keeps coming up when I put in my social security number. Is that a problem that other people in the district are having? Yes. Um, unfortunately, we're hearing from a lot of people who are having issues with the portal. As I said earlier, I do have a call in 19 minutes um, with the IRS and we are going to be asking them what they're doing to make the portal more user friendly, more effective, easier for people to use. Um, all I can say at this point, and um, I can't, you know, keep trying to get that information in because I think, as Heather alluded to, uh, there is a schedule for when these uh, ec economic impact payments are going out. And if you don't have your direct deposit information on file, either through a previous return or through this portal, then the Treasury Department and the IRS are going to just issue the paper check and you'll be on that weekly schedule that Heather referred to. So um, if folks do have, um, have had issues with the uh, portal, please do call our office. Let us know. We're trying to get information back to people whenever we get it. And again, our phone number is 508 seven, four, six, 9,000. The other thing I, I meant to mention before that um, people might want to know is that the IRS yeah. is actually hosting a webinar tomorrow on its website uh, for individuals and small businesses. Uh, and one of the topics will be the economic impact payment uh, system. The webinar is tomorrow at two o'clock. If you go to the irs.gov website, you can find information on how to pre-register for that. Uh, we hope to have staff on that call and uh, hopefully get more information from the 1 p.m. call uh, as well. But um, yeah, please do let us know if you're having issues because we want to be able to present those issues to the IRS and we want to be able to get back to folks if they are having trouble with the portal, um, if and when we get additional guidance from the IRS. Thank you, Michael Jackman uh, from Congressman Bill Keating's office. We're going to go back to Heather Cosby. Uh, a viewer writes, Heather, my husband and I filed married filing jointly for 2018, and we were eligible and we received money. I filed single for the tax year 2019, and probably my adjust gross income was not or barely within the high limit on income. When filing for tax year 2020, I will again be eligible. Will I have to repay the money if this scenario is correct? 
you do not have to repay it. If you qualified and you already received a payment, you're done. There is nothing um, additional that you have to pay back. If you qualified and received a partial payment, and then when you file your 19 return, I'm sorry, your 20 return, if you qualify for more, you should get that adjustment. But you'll never, you, there's no clawback um, part of this, this uh, legislation, which would be where they want to actually reconcile it and have money uh, sent back. That's not a part of this legislation at all. So if you qualified and received your money, you are done. Thank you, Heather Cosby, CPA. We're now going to go back to Dr. Maestas and a question from a viewer. And the viewer writes, uh, we're pleased that we're making graduation special for seniors. Uh, what is the plan for doing something special for eighth graders and fifth graders who are moving up this year? Dr. Maestas. Uh, uh, we have a listing of all of the events that take place at the end of the year. Uh, the principals at both the elementary and middle schools will be working on how to do culminating events for the uh, rising sixth graders and the rising freshmen. So uh, that will be happening and I would encourage parents to look forward to that. Um, I, did, I did write that in my letter yesterday to families that we would be looking at those activities. So if they um, would like to go on to the district website, if you wanna go on to Facebook, uh, and take a look at the letter that was published yesterday uh, afternoon after the governor's announcement. Uh, that document will you know, identify that we are looking at all of these end of year activities uh, to be able to um, recognize those students for doing so. Uh, again, it's gonna be very, very difficult because um, a lot of these events will probably have to be done virtually, um, but social distancing just does not allow us to be able to do what we'd like to do. Uh, so uh, the principals will be working on a model of recognizing students for their um, advancement in those specific uh, schools. Thank you, Dr. Maestas. And each day we ask each of the participants in our panel uh, to give us a closing thoughts uh, as they've listened to each other. We're going to start with Sarah Cloud, Director of Behavioral Health and Social Work at Beth Israel Deaconess. Sarah, what would be a takeaway that you want our viewers to remember today? You know, I think the takeaway is that um, this pandemic has introduced a new term into our everyday life, um, and that term being social distancing. And social distancing is really important and it absolutely is saving lives. And it's particularly uh, important to us here at the hospital so that we can manage the volume of needs. Um, but I also think it's very misleading and that we should really be focusing on physical distancing instead. I think now more than ever, um, we need more social connection, not less. We really need to support and encourage and um, console and cope and celebrate at times, you know, the celebrations of the students and the accomplishments. And sometimes we just need each other to kind of simply continue on and continue functioning. And so I think a strong connection and a feeling of belonging and a sense of community um, are all really important for us to kind of go through the distance and get through this um, pandemic and also really build, I think, a strong foundation for rebuilding. And um, so I just really want to encourage folks to continue to stay connected, um, reach out to friends, to family, uh, to colleagues, to participate in the virtual activities that are available. Um, but in addition to yoga and workouts, and there's all sorts of really new things coming online that we can do very differently um, including the telehealth of uh, therapy and self-help meetings, um, which are really new and very accessible. So I just, my message is that we really do need each other and we're here for each other. Um, so please stay socially connected while practicing physical distancing. Sarah and Cloud is the Director of Behavioral Health Social Work at Beth Israel Deaconess. Good words to live by and remember as we all try to navigate through the COVID-19 response. And at this time, we're going to go back to Michael Jackman from Congressman Keating's office. Uh, Mike, what would be closing statement you'd like to share with our viewers? Yeah, just um, first of all, I want to follow up on what Sarah would mention before about uh, social distancing. And social distancing doesn't mean being socially isolated. Um, I think the parade she mentioned when the first responders uh, went by the hospital to show their appreciation for everything that the workers at the hospital are doing to keep us safe, to 
care for our loved ones, care for us in, in some circumstances was so important because it shows that the community is connected. And, and it, it is so important to, and I just want to add my, I couldn't be there because I'm, I'm, I'm isolating at home, but um, working from home, but it is, we just want to add my thanks to the healthcare workers at the hospital, community health centers, uh, you know, all, all across what the senior center is doing, all across the community, folks who are doing extra to help out um, in these difficult times. That includes all the town departments. Uh, I've had occasion to call on behalf of constituents and the town departments have been so helpful. So I want to say thank you uh, to them. Um, my own little one person parade here saying thank you to them. So we know that the community is still connected. I just want to mention, you know, we talk about all these programs and I'm glad Heather goes after me so she can explain the real deal as opposed to what I say. I'm doing the best I can, but all these programs are really in place because we, we recognize that when people call us, they're, they're hurting financially and people are really going through tough times. And we recognize that we're trying to work with the agencies to get information, good information to people so that they can take advantage of these programs. Um, and it's, and sometimes, whether it's unemployment or the uh, business uh, loans or the uh, stimulus rebate checks, it, it, sometimes it can be a challenge. But please keep trying. Please keep in touch with us. Please don't be uh, isolate yourself or cut cut yourself off from the community because there are resources out there, and uh, we want to work together to try to get those resources to the people that need them. And again, I thank you all for the opportunity to be on and. It's always great to hear from a fellow panelist as well. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Michael Jackman with Congressman Bill Keating's office. And as he said, we're doing this each day to try to keep all of you connected to our federal and state partners and local officials and local members of our community so that we won't be isolated as we try to uh, deal with these, this pandemic. We're now gonna go to Heather Cosby, as Mike said, for her closing real deal. Heather? Thank you very much. And I appreciate everybody's kind words. This has been, um, it's been an experience like uh, none I could have ever imagined in my chosen profession. And uh, everybody, I know a few people on this on this uh, conference today. It's so nice to see you. And, um, you know, everybody, of course, all that, everybody who's working in the healthcare it goes without saying. I wanna give a personal shout out to all the personal accountants, all the local accountants here in Plymouth. I could try and name them all, but I'll forget somebody, so I won't. But uh, I'll quite honestly, in the background behind, once you get through the health concerns, the bankers and the accountants in town are doing an incredible job. They're working around the clock. And uh, personally, I just, we're working, I talk to other accountants all the time, trying to sort this out, working together, uh, and I just really appreciate it. And I wish you all you know, the best to continue to get through this and um, stay safe, everybody. Heather, one additional question just came in. Uh, for the people who have been denied the PPP loan, if you know, do they have to reapply? I think I, I haven't heard of anybody being denied. So I'd have to understand why they were denied to see if they would get over that hurdle. You can absolutely continue to apply. You can only ever have one approved application, but they really need to understand why they were denied before they would apply, apply again. So the viewer indicates that it was due to the money having run out in the past. The, I'm sorry, the, uh, you the cut money, out. The funding the ran money out. The money out? The funding ran out on the first go around. Yes, one, the minute the new funding is open, they need to resubmit their application and their key takeaway is they need to ask if they've been given a SBA loan number once that application is given. Thank you. And uh, we're now going to go on to uh, Amy Naples. Amy, your closing thoughts? Absolutely. Um, I just want to reiterate, Sarah, on behalf of the business community, we are so grateful for everyone at BID for, for providing care and services to our community. So many local businesses have reached out to me on ways that they can show their appreciation to our amazing community hospital. And I know they've been delivering meals and gifts just to show their gratitude. And we've certainly learned that the essential employees are our true heroes. And that includes Heather, of course, all of our accountants, bankers that are getting us through during this time. Um, as Mike and Heather mentioned today, the PPP it will be available soon. So it is so critical that our business community jumps on that opportunity. 
And um, as a reminder to the business community, stay connected through social media. Um, those are your customers and potential customers. It is so powerful. People are spending so much time on it. So engage with them. Those, those are your future customers. So um, I just want to thank everyone, of course, for supporting your local business. And remember when purchasing to spend locally. Um, thank you so much for having me again today. Amy Naples is the Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. She joins us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're now going to go back to Matt Muratori for your closing statement, Matt. I did out to just what everyone said. Everyone just you know summed everything up very well. I, I like what Sarah said about physical distancing. It's not social distancing. It's physical distancing, and she's absolutely right. You know, so in that vein, again, what I say every day, stay informed. Uh, stay informed by going to mass.gov forward slash COVID-19. You could call 211 to get inf more information, or you can get text alerts by texting COVID-MA to 888-777. Or if you have questions on your health, go to bowie.com forward slash mass. You know, stay calm. You know, we're, we're, we're in the surge. Um, it's going to be, it's not going to be next week. We're going to be out of this, and it's not going to be May 4th. So we're going to continue in this for a little while longer. We are the uh, epicenter of the, of the nation right now uh, for this COVID-19. So we are going to be one of the last to get through this. So, but we will get through it, continue to do what we're doing. Um, you know, stay home as much as you possibly can, physical distance, as, as Sarah said. Um, and the, again, the more we can come together by staying apart, the quicker we'll get back to the people we love and the things we love to do. But thanks again to everyone, all the panelists, to Steve and to PAC TV. Uh, for everything you're doing. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Matthew Muratori, Plymouth State Representative, and to all of our participants today, including Dr. Gary Maestas, Superintendent of Schools, Sarah Cloud from the Beth Israel Deaconess Plymouth Campus, also to Heather Cosby, CPA, Michael Jackman from Congressman <coughs> Bill Keatings, Amy Naples, Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce, and of course, our Selectman Chair, Kenneth Tavares, for your closing statement, Ken. Thank you, Steve. Uh, first, uh, to Gary, uh, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, thank you for everything that you're doing to make the graduation for 2020 special. Uh, we're glad you're there, Gary. We know that you and your very capable staff on all levels will make this a very memorable graduation. Uh, the class of 2020 is special because we, they've been part of our planning for the uh, celebration of, of Plymouth 400 for better than 10 years. So we really do appreciate what you're doing. <clears throat> the other thank you that I'd like to give is to Sarah Cloud. Sarah, thank you for emphasizing that no matter what we're doing to get through this crisis, there's a human being involved. And that I think is, is what we need to remember. Some are going through this very easily. Others are having a great deal of difficulty. But there is a there human, under your access code. and as the governor said yesterday, uh, we're in the third quarter. This is not the time to slow down. This is not the time to give up. We can do it, and we will. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth Tavares, Chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen, and to all of our participants. Tomorrow, again, we have Dr. Mark Wilson, who is an epidemiologist. He'll be talking to us about testing tracing, and we're very fortunate to have him looking at the numbers locally and regionally for us as we continue to review where we're going uh, with this COVID-19 response. Also, Dan Harold, Principal of uh, Federal Furnace Elementary School, Lawrence Pizer, our town clerk, Stephen Cole, he's the Executive Director for the Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation. They'll be joining uh, Ken Tavares, Matt Miratori, and me. I'm Steve Trafletti, Plymouth Town Moderator. Thank you for joining us, and good day. Thank you. Good day, everybody. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.